Hi there, we are so close to finishing our last Christmas uh, synthesizer project here in Soundtrap. I have shared with my students today the synth interlude, which is something that comes in in the middle of the song. We're going to chart that out later, but for now, we've got the sheet music here to this little interlude here. Um, there are some octave A's, so a very large jump from A to A, but it's just an octave. And uh, of course, there's a tiny amount of syncopation here where this A in the comes in at the very end of the first measure but the rest of it rhythmically is very straightforward and happens in scale fashion and again we talked about being diatonic or native to the key so this is all in the key of D major it's basically a D major scale but starting on A A B C sharp D E D and where there aren't scale notes it's usually just usually just tiny jumps here just a little skip of a, of a distance of a third is what we call that, except for this octave at the beginning, any other skip is just a third, especially, for example, when we go A, F sharp, D, B, and G on the next line. That, of course, is just a G major seven uh, arpeggio. And then we have this next little arpeggio here, which is an A major seven arpeggio. So those are just two of the chords in the song. That seems almost counterintuitive like maybe you've never thought of it this way but often melodies are just parts of the scale and parts of the arpeggios there's not much more to it than that a lot of times um, uh, the last thing I'll bring to your attention is that most of the phrases in this song are eight measures long this one happens to be nine measures long it just sort of uh, leaps over the the boundary and finishes on the on tonic or on do uh, so I put a little double bar in here just to illustrate that the phrase is really eight measures long and sort of bleeds over into the next measure. So in my Soundtrap file, I'm gonna add a new track and I'm gonna use a synthesizer today. I have found that in the leads, my personal favorite sound for this is the toy bells. And in fact, I'm gonna record this an octave higher than written just because of the way I like it sounding on the toy bells. Uh, I'll show you my piano roll in a little bit, but I'm gonna perform this in right now. Here we go. So this starts on A3. Okay, so that was, I think, lucky that I got that in one take you have the opportunity right now to press pause on this video and of course I will quantize this see for the most part our smallest entity here is an eighth note so let's quantize this to eighth notes and just check and make sure that they line up the most important thing is that syncopation in measure one so we want to make sure that the last A of that measure comes in on the and of four, but otherwise this should be good. Okay, so I like the way that sounds, that's great. If you want to pause your video and go to your own file, by all means you may. I want to take an opportunity to show you an old-fashioned recording studio trick. So first what I'm going to advise you to do is to take this track and I'm going to have you duplicate it. Okay, then we're going to mute out the original track, the one that we just recorded. Um, in, in the instrument panel, you have a couple options here. We're going to take pan and pan turns the sound in our left ear or our right ear so we can have it in one ear or the other ear or if it's right in the middle in both ears we're going to knock this guy all the way into the left ear we're going to add a little bit of extra reverb that's sort of uh, extra vibration like if you were in a very large room or a bathroom and um, then i'm going to copy this file again i'm going to duplicate this again okay so if we look at the pan, this one's all the way in the left, just like the other one. We're going to turn this one all the way to the right. And so if you're wondering why I'm doing that, the reason is because 
I'm going to take this track, the one that I just put on into my right ear. Okay, so this track I moved to my left ear and this track I moved to my right ear. I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it over just the tiniest little bit so that it's offset. And if we were to look at the notes in the track, you can see that they no longer line up perfectly. And this could drive you crazy. But because this is moving from left to right, which is often what we what we see or what we hear, like sometimes it's referred to as the Doppler effect when it changes pitch, but when a sound is right in front of us and it moves in front of us, we hear it go from either from left to right or from right to left. So this is gonna create the illusion of extra space. So if you listen to this, this is better with headphones. <laughs> compare that if you mute both of those tracks and now listen to it in the original form where it's just in both ears again you might prefer to listen to that with headphones but it just has a little bit different effect it opens up the sound I don't feel um, obligated to tell you that you have to keep that effect, but it is a really neat recording studio trick. Uh, of course, it would not go very, very far here. You can't have this delay be the value of like an eighth note. That would be too far probably, but just a fraction of a second is enough to create this open illusion. Okay, make sure you save your work and uh, get to it. Good luck.